revived. But physically and mentally, it wore me out. To be honest with you, uh, I guess when you start getting older, you just don't have that much energy anymore. But I'm grateful to God that He allowed me to be here and gave me the strength to be here on this morning. Now, we're not going to be long because I'm not a long winded preacher. I think you're going to be glad of that this morning because you will be at home by now. Uh, those of you that have your Bibles, turn to Daniel, the third chapter. Third chapter, Daniel, 17 and 18 verse. Daniel 3, 17 and 18. When you have stand to your feet. Amen. And it reads, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O King. But if not, be it known unto thee, O King, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which God has set up. You may be seen. I want to speak for a few minutes. Standing up for the God you serve. In other words, stand your ground. A little while ago, we heard of a law that most people did not know existed. It was believe that baby long. It was a law called stand your ground. This law was instituted years and years ago by one race of people that they might have an advantage over another person. And that law is still on the books. It's a subtle law, stand your ground. But we are not talking about standing against one another. We are not talking about standing against a white man nor a black man. Amen. And talking about standing up for God. Standing up against whatever is not of God. All right now. Somewhere in life we need to take a stand. Yes. And say enough is enough. Yes. In life, I, I don't know about you, but I think we've all found ourselves at one time or another standing up for somebody else. Sometimes we have stood up for somebody even when they were wrong. All right, man. A family member, a best friend, right or wrong, we were willing to stand up yes, Lord. for them, and we thought that we were right. So many times I saw mothers standing up in courtroom with tears in their eyes, begging the judges to give their child another chance, mm -hmm. even though that mother knew that child was wrong. All right, now. But after all, it was a child. Yes, Lord. I've seen women that have been beaten by abusive husbands stand up and lie to the police and swear that he didn't do it. They would say, I fell out of 
hard, it would come up. And I, I don't, you know, I don't understand that because if you've abused me and the police come, I'm pointing you out. But, but, yeah, but they stood up. Sometimes children would stand up for one another against mothers and fathers to keep little brother and little sister from getting a whipping. But I wonder this morning, is there anybody here that will stand up for God? All right, I wonder, is there anybody here that loves the Lord enough to say, for God I live and for God I die. Come on, help me somebody. I ain't going to be too long. Oh, I, I, I know that God don't need my help. But church, when I look back at where I he brought me from. Yes, when I think about all the danger, seen and unseen, that he had brought me through. Yes. When I think about how he fed me when I was hungry. Mm -hmm. How he put clothes on my back when I was naked. How he stood by my bedside when I was sick. Mm -hmm. When I think about how he had forgiven me all of my sins. Well, I don't know about you, but I can't help but stand up for him and tell the dying world that he is God and besides him there is no other God. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I must confess, I, I get weak sometimes. Yes. Amen. But Paul says in Ephesians 6, 13, take on the whole armor of yes. God. Yes, yes. That you might be able to stand in the evil days and having done all to stand, Paul said, then stand. Stand. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then he said in that 14th verse, stand that for having the ground good up with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Uh-huh. Yeah, so many times, folks in the church said, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. They just faking it to make it. But Paul said, it's got to be in truth. All right, man. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 3 and 8, that now we live if we stand fast in the Lord. And you wonder sometimes why so many people are in the church, but they're still catching hell because they're faking it. Yeah, yeah, they, they're faking it. Oh yeah, uh, don't get me wrong. If, if, if you're in the Christ, you're going to have some problem with Satan. That's his job. He is only doing what he's supposed to do. But what you're supposed to do is stand up to Satan. Then Paul said in Philippians 1 27, stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah, church, I don't care what's going on. That's what we got to do here in New Begin. We got to stand together. All right, man. Because believe me, one of the preachers said it the other night, every time we come to New Begin, trust me, Satan comes here too. Amen. And Satan, you don't have no wings. He's not flying in here. He rides somebody back. All right, man. Yeah. It, 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 it's not just the pastor that needs to stand for God, but we all need to stand in one spirit with the pastor. All right. Can I get him Yeah, the reason some folk can't stand up for God is because they're still in bondage. Satan still got them bound, and they don't realize that Satan still got them bound. Uh, Galatians 5 and 1 says, Stand fast and deliver it. Where will Christ have made us free? And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. If you ever been in bondage and got out of it, something got to be mentally wrong with you to get back in it again. All right, All right. The thing that God has brought me out of, the devil in hell can't pull me back into it. All right. It took me too long to get away. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, I, I got away. I got away. Back. Yeah, by the skin of my, of my skin, but I got away. Amen. Amen. The devil in the hell ain't going to take me back out. My brother and sister, we got to stand up together for God. Because Jesus said, 
Matthew 12, 25, every house divided against itself shall not stand. Yeah, we need to stand up for him. Why? We can't. I'll be very close now because I heard John said in Revelation 6 and 17 that the great day of his wrath is coming and who shall be able to stand? Yes, Lord. Yeah, if you don't stand this morning, one of these days you will wish that I had stood up. Uh, in our text this morning, I'm coming on now. That was the king by the name of King Nebuchadnezzar. Yes, Lord. That reigned during the time of King Jehoiakim. Uh huh. Jerusalem had been overrun. And Nebuchadnezzar had brought out of Jerusalem captives. Uh huh. People uh, that he would make slaves out of. Yes, Lord. And out of the crew that he brought, uh, uh, with three young men that was favored young men. Yes, Lord. In other words, they were, uh, they had class. Uh -huh. They were educated young men. Yes. They showed intelligence. Uh -huh. Their name, by the way, was Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Yes, Lord. Uh, but when, uh, that was got them. He changed their names. Uh -huh. uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yes, Lord. I think I need to tell you this morning, you can't stop folk from calling you out of your name. Yes, Lord. That's good. I don't care what they call me. As long as I know who I am. Amen. decided he would make him a god. The Bible says that he went out on the plain of Dura. Yes, Lord. And there he erected a statue. Uh -huh. Ninety feet tall and nine feet wide. Yes, Lord. And he sent out a decree throughout his kingdom that whenever the music played I want everybody to bow down to my statue. Jesus. And if you don't bow down, I'm going to put you in the fiery furnace. Yes, Lord. Well, when the music played, the Bible said they all began to bow. Ah, uh, but somebody that should have been bowing was looking around uh -huh. and noticed three young men that were not bound. Yes, Lord. Well, it's just like some folk in the church. Sometimes pastors say, every head bowed and every eye closed. All quiet. But I promise you somebody is still looking around. Help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they went and told the king, king, we heard your decree. You said when the music bowed, that everybody should bow down. But there are three young men that are not bound. Uh -huh. Well, because the king had found favor in them, he wanted to give them another chance. He said, come, I know you heard what I said when the music played, that every knee must bow. I think I, oh, I like the way they answered it this evening. They said, in other words, they said, okay, we are not careful to answer you. In other words, we're not going to even think about what we need to say to you. We're going to tell you that we're not going to bow. Yeah. All right, now. The Bible says that the king in his angry had the furnace heated up three times hotter, seven times hotter than it usually was. The furnace was so hot when the men that were thrown in, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the flames destroyed them. But after a while, the Bible said the king went back and looked in the furnace. And to his amazement, he began to call those that are around him. 
He said, I know you all saw me to win three men. Yes, Lord. But now I see four. Oh, yeah. And the four who look like the Son of God. Yes, Lord. Ain't God all right to see me? Yes. If you stand up for God, I don't care what the devil throws at you. Yes, Lord. God uh, going to be with you. Yes. And I thank God this evening uh, that Jesus left me an example of uh, how to stand up for God. Yes. You got to stand up uh, in the Word. Yes. I heard uh, David said, uh, Thy word uh, have I hid uh, in my heart uh, that I might not uh, sin against thee. Yes. When Jesus uh, was baptized, uh, the Bible says uh, he was led in uh, to the wilderness. Yes, and 40 days uh, without eating, uh, the serpent came uh, and tempted him and said to him, uh, I know you are hungry, but if you are the Son of God, uh, command these stones uh, to be made bread. Uh, but Jesus said, uh, Satan uh, is written that man should not live uh, by bread alone. The Bible says, uh, Satan took him uh, upon the pinnacle uh, of the temple uh, and uh, told Jesus, uh, if you be uh, the Son of God, uh, cast yourself down, uh, for it already written uh, that the angels uh, will bow you up. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, but Jesus told him, uh, it's written, uh, thou shalt not tempt uh, the Lord thy God. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, but Satan had one more. He took him upon uh, the highest mountains uh, and showed him all uh, the glories of the world uh, and told him, uh, if you bow down uh, and worship me, uh, all uh, the kingdoms of the world, uh, I'll give you. Ain't God all right? Uh, but I heard uh, Jesus said, uh, thou shalt worship uh, the Lord thy God, uh, and him only shall thou worship us. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, all through uh, those three years, uh, Every now and then, uh, Satan uh, would try to tempt Jesus. Uh, and one Thursday night, uh, they took him down uh, to Pilate's cold room. Uh, and all night long, uh, they whipped my Lord. Uh, but he still stood up for God. Uh, he got all right. Uh, and early Friday morning, uh, they put a cross on his shoulder and led him out to Calvary. Between two thieves, but he stood up for God. Because I heard him say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And remember the night time in the darkness, I heard him say, Father, it's finished. And they buried him in a borrowed grave. And all night Friday, he stayed in the grave. And all day Saturday, he stayed right there all night long. Saturday night, uh, he stayed in the grave. Uh, but early Sunday morning, uh, he rose uh, with all power uh, in his hand. Uh, that same power, if you take that power this morning, uh, you can stand up for God uh, no matter what comes along in your life. Jesus.